Hey friends and family, welcome to Marcy Creates. This is Marcy. And tonight I have a really great video for you. We're gonna do a Softflex unboxing. And then we're gonna make a necklace with the new latest that they just revealed. It's called Moroccan Bazaar. And it is gorgeous from what I can see. So I can't wait to show you what's in here. So we're gonna get started with uh, the wire, the Softflex wire, which is this beautiful copper, beautiful copper color, uh, metallics in medium. And you get, let's see, I think it's 10 feet, 49 strands, 26 pounds. So small but mighty, love that. And with the kit, it's gonna be really gorgeous. Then we also have uh, their crimp tubes, which I never can say enough about, and they are in copper. So love these. We also have some Tierra cast, uh, copper plated. Uh, what is it? Copper plated two loop, two loop, stitch in magnetic clasp. Now, this will make great for a bracelet. Wow, that really is, that is magnetic. If you're worried about it not holding anything, trust me, that was hard to take apart. <laughs> so I think that would be secure on your wrist. I've worn magnetic clasps before that weren't secure on my wrist and it was really a bummer, but this one is super strong and look at that beautiful design. That does look very Moroccan to me. Love it. And then look at this beautiful uh, charm. Uh, let's see. They are calling it a Mendy charm in antique copper. Isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely beautiful. And then some ear wires in copper. So copper findings, which is really gorgeous with the with the wire, I think. And they have a bunch of strands that are gorgeous. So let's, they're check strands. So the first one is uh, check rainbow melons in uh, four millimeter, bunch of beautiful colors. I think I counted nine different colors. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine colors. And it's a really pretty melon bead. Love that texture. So that's gonna be gorgeous. And we also have Capri Blue Faceted Drops. This is a really beautiful blue. And uh, I like the shape a lot. These are great drops. So in the Capri Blue. Then we have Czech Glass Copper Picasso Arabesque Beads. Look at these. Gorgeous. I love this design. I have these in other colors. And that's one thing I love about Czech beads. If you like a shape or a design, they have it in almost every finish every color. There's always combinations I haven't seen before. So it's always fun to get new check beads. And these are really nice. They're a nice neutral um, in the copper. Then we also have some, huh, brown, seven millimeter purple with brown faceted Fire, pro fire polish rounds. So you got the nice dusty purple with brown, which will look great with the copper. Nice uh, long strand there in a seven millimeter. So that is our strands and they look great. And then the um, companion items. So you get a Jesse James beads mix made specifically for this 
box, I mean this mystery kit. And I also went ahead and got the Jesse James bead strand. Now look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Lots of different little fluted spacer beads. I love these with the milky kind of opal looking. I call them opal like disco balls. Got a little hishi bead in there. Pretty rondelle. Beautiful green. Uh, faceted drop. Some pottery. Some antique looking bead caps with the beautiful topaz faceted round. And look at these with the with the chain on the edge and the beautiful medallion look and then gorgeous faceted kind of twisted uh yellow bead that's gorgeous with the facets and then you get two of each uh from what's on this side so really pretty and look how it looks with with our other strands that Capri Blue is looking nice with these little Hishi beads. And I love the copper and the gold mix. That's something you'll see in my design. I kind of, I don't have a complete idea of what I'm doing, but I did do a little pre-work, which I'll show you in a minute, only because I didn't want to make the video so, so um, long. Uh, so let's look at the mix. This is the mix. Again, these are made exclusively for Softflex by Jesse James Beads. And this mix came in the kit. The strand is extra. It's usually like $11 or so. I do recommend getting the strands, that compa the companion strands. I think that you can get a lot of uh, designs and do a lot of things. And they're just so gorgeous. You know, you know Jesse James Beads, they make beautiful, beautiful bead mixes. So let me just move these to the side and we're gonna take a look Happy Saturday to you, by the way. We're gonna take a look at the Moroccan Bazaar mix, which looks fabulous. It looks gorgeous. This is always so much fun to look at. I'm just gonna pour them out. Ooh, boy. We have somebody that's shy. Come here, mister. There we go. Oh, you guys. <gasps> look at this. Look at that. What a beautiful piece for a focal. Gorgeous. All right. That looks very ornate. Some really cute tassels. I love this mustardy yellow color. That's quite fun. And then we also have like a rusty tan color. A little bit of orange in it, it actually really pretty what do they call that um sienna brown if you painters out there that's more of an ochre right ochre all right then we have ooh more facets more faceted are these the same they look like it cool so more of those Look at these fun red squished um what are they like they're kind of like the um melons but squished in kind of a red color very fun oh look at these with the blush those are gorgeous and i like nice pink it's a really pretty palette. Different shades of greens, different shades of reds, which are opposites on the color wheel. We have some yellow and some blue and some purple. The yellow and the purple are also opposites on the color wheel. And some of the coppers would go nice with the blue because that's also like an orange and that goes. So we got a bunch of mixed mixed uh, color wheel type stuff here that all coordinates nicely. Now look at these melon beads. I love that with a little little bit of coppery orange and then the teal. Beautiful. And then we have a more neutral bead. Kind of a 
chocolate brown metallic faceted rondel. These are pretty. Emerald green bite. I don't know if you call those bicones. They're more like diamond shaped, really. But I like them. I like them. Oh, and some copper. Oh, these are nice. Copper beads. Gorgeous. Some wooden discs. It does look very, this is a very eclectic look. And if you think about like a bazaar and like stalls full of goods, you're gonna see all kinds of different textures and shapes and colors. So I love this. I love these little, I don't know, they look almost like balls of wool. <laughs> That's pretty. Bead caps. We can always use bead caps and there's several kinds here. Uh, which I like. I like the mixture of them. I'll just pull a few out. Got some copper, got some gold, kind of flower shapes and some star shapes. Ooh, we got some pearls. Wow, there's a lot in this mix, guys. Lots of different stuff. Those are fun. Looks great with this mix. Some copper spacer beads and kind of a saucer shape. Antique copper. I love that design on them too. I have this and other, I think I have these in silver and gold as well. They're just a nice, oh, here we got some leaves. They're just a nice uh, spacer bead to have, as I was starting to say. Those are really pretty leaf drops. More of these bead caps, which we looked at. Then we've got some I think these are glass. Little brown beads, little rounds. Wow, now we're getting into some tiny stuff here. Some teeny dicey stuff. My goodness. Okay, so we've got some minuscule. I love these though. They're so fun, even though they're little, they do pack a punch because they're so sparkly. Look at these little guys. They are big. I mean, they're big. They're big on color. They're tiny though, but they're kind of metallic. I don't know if you could see that green and blue. Wow, very pretty. Now check out these little tiny, <laughs> oh, these are min minuscule too. These are the tiniest daisy spacer beads I think I've ever seen. Have you seen any tinier than this? <laughs> what are those, like three millimeter? I think they are. Really tiny. Cute though. Then we've got some kind of gray brown neutral rondelles. Very sparkly. Oop, there goes one. And then the most, the tiniest cubes. These are like seed beads. Seed bead cubes. Minuscule. I kind of like them though but they are tiny. So we got those. So I think that's everything. Let me just, we'll just spread everything out and take a gander before we get started on tonight's project. But very colorful, very gorgeous. Can't wait to play with it. Love the copper. Uh, and if you have this kit, they, um, they already did the reveal on July 26th, but from July 26th to August 28th, you can post pictures of your designs made with this kit over at the Softflex VIB Studio Facebook group with the hashtag bizarre, hashtag bizarre, and you can enter to win a future kit. The winner is chosen at random. So that's cool. So whatever you make with this, if you post it on there, you're in for a drawing. You got to put that hashtag though. Anyway, I'm loving this. Now let me show you kind of where I'm going. Uh, we're going to do a necklace tonight with this. And I haven't totally decided everything, but I did get started. Uh, I got inspired uh, kind of by this piece. I saw it 
peeking out through the plastic with the um, spacer beads and the other findings. And I really liked that shape and I, I've done some wear work in that shape before. What I ended up doing is more like a leaf shape, which is fine. I think it just echoes part of this. And I'll show you quickly. So I made these pieces. We're, there's gonna be five, so I'm gonna make one uh, on camera. And they're all a little bit different. Let me just show you. And I also started doing some, I also put some wire on this one. This one I made to be um, different from the rest of them. So I have two that are just alike. They're all the same size, but this one has a embellishment on it. And I'm gonna make a second one. This one has a bigger embellishment, as you can see, a swirl. And then these don't have any, they're just plain. And the reason I have this wire wrap on here, this is, and I made this all with 18 gauge wire and I'm gonna show you how I made these. But um, I have 26 gauge wire that I've wrapped about six times on the center one. Uh, Cause I'm gonna add some beads just to this edge right here. And I'm gonna do that on all of these. And I'm gonna use these different colored mel uh, melon beads and I'm gonna pick col the colors, there's nine here, but I'm only doing five of these, but they're each gonna have their own color. So that's the centerpiece, and these are already made. Now, if you wanna make this, uh, I'm gonna tell you the sizes, I mean the length of wire that I used. I used eight inches of wire, this is um, 18 gauge gold wire, to make these with no embellishments. This one I used nine inches, and that's the one I'm gonna make the duplicate here in a little bit. And this one, 10 inches. And the reason for the difference in lengths is whether or not you have an embellishment. So if you wanna make this and you want a little swirl, you're gonna use nine inches because you need that extra to make that little loop, I mean the little swirl. 10 inches makes a bigger one. And you could even go uh, bigger than that if you want a really big one. But I just wanted a bigger one for just the center because what's gonna happen is we're gonna, um, let's see, I'm gonna put the plain ones next to and then the ones with the little embellishments on the outside and they're gonna hang from the necklace. Kind of like, a, almost like a collar You'll see when I get started. Uh, there'll be beads in between that we're gonna string, uh, but I wanna get all these um, made first. So that's why I did them ahead of time. I didn't wanna make this video super long. So we're gonna make one now. I'm just gonna pull one because I did kind of use uh, one as a guide. And we're gonna, we're gonna need a ruler. I'm trying to find my ruler. I pulled it out, so oh, here we go. I pulled it out and then I lost it. <laughs> anyway, I used this ruler and we're gonna take our 18 gauge wire and I'm going to, so since I'm making the one with the small swirl, we're gonna do nine inches. So, I'm just gonna unspool this. And it doesn't need to be super exact. I just pretty much laid it next to the, um, the ruler and then cut it. So for each one of these, now let me get the ends. That's pointy. I don't want pointy ends, you want them flush. Okay, so that's about nine inches, give or take. So then the actual leaf type shape is made with four inches of wire. So we're going to measure, because this nine inches is gonna make the swirl at the very end. So we're gonna 
look where the four inches are. I'm sorry, this is gonna be, the four inch mark is going to be this little divot right here. So you just wanna measure that four inches and then you're gonna take, pardon my hand, uh, something kind of like needle nose pliers or um, just your thinnest, you know, pincher things that you have and you're just gonna come up like this and just make and see how this piece is longer so that's gonna be the top of our piece and then once you've done that then we are going to take our bent nose or whatever works for you whatever you like and we're gonna just pinch this little piece in and just take your time. I should have hand warmed this and I didn't. So I think I'll do that right now. So once you've pinched that, hand warm it before you do this, but I didn't. That's all right. Let me just get these warm because we're going to make the shape next. And I keep dropping, I used a, like a perfume thing. You'll see, just pick something you know, you can use a, anything to make a, you know, form out of. All right, so let me just pinch that one more time. All right, and I don't worry if it's a little crooked. Uh, you're gonna be, none of these, these, don't, these just need to look similar. They don't need to be exact. I mean, that's part of the charm of handmade jewelry, right? You know, it's not gonna be perfect. So this is my little perfume. It has like a little sample in it. Um, this came from Scentbird. Anyway, um, it's a nice round shape. So when I started to try to make these, you know, match, I'm gonna see this little divot right here. I'm just gonna push him up for right now. And I'm just gonna put him right here this is how I've been making these <laughs> and I'll probably have to look a little bit off camera because I'm not right on top of it but I just want you to see once they're lined up you can kind of eyeball how you're gonna bend this and like I said it's not gonna be exact you can push with your thumb oops it's a weird angle when you don't want to, when you're filming. So give me just a second. Okay, so just pinch it. All right. And now we can take this off. And we're going to just line these up. So once I got it off the mandrel, whatever I'm using for a mandrel. Then, bear with me just a second. I'm just gonna lay this one on top that I made just now. And I'm just gonna, I kind of pinch these in a little with my fingers. Again, they're not gonna be exact. Don't worry about that. You're just looking for them to be similar in shape and similar in size so and it seems like one wants to pop out a little more i'm okay with that if you want to be more exact you can let me push this back so let's just check that okay so so what we want to do now now that we have these really close is you want your longer piece to stay upright. So what I did is I just kind of gently bent it to kind of fit. And then I took my needle nose or my round, my bent nose, sorry, 
and I just made it straight. And then this piece is gonna wrap around. So I just kind of got it started, okay? And now we can take this and put it to the side for now. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wire wrap this shorter piece around the taller piece three times. And you don't want to press right where they're crossing. You just wanna get your pliers, whatever it is you're using, right above it. Just get a good grip on it. We're just gonna wire wrap three times. Okay. And then you want that piece to be perpendicular. You're gonna press this down, okay? Oh, you know what? It needs to be two. Two wraps, I'm sorry. Well, that's easy to fix. Since I've done that, I could show you if you do that, how to fix it. So it's a good thing I did that. Two wraps, sorry guys, two wraps. Let me just straighten this out a little. And I need to straighten that too. So if it's kind of off kilter, you can come in with pliers and just do that. Okay, sorry. Two wraps and perpendicular and then press down. This is all with the four inches of white or four inches and then some the four inches are what made this little divot, but you have enough if you do it the right, if you make sure the long piece is st sticking up and the short piece, piece you wrap, you should get something like this. You can play with the shape till you're happy with it and you can check it against your other piece and just get it the way you want it. I'm fine with that actually. So. Now we're gonna make the loop. It's a simple loop. We're gonna hang a dangle in there at some point. Um, so I take my round nose and I was in the middle of my round nose when I did this. And you just wanna come in. You can hold this with your thumb and your finger like that while you're making this loop. That's very helpful. And you just wanna make a P just use your wrists. Sometimes it turns around on you, that's okay. You can come in and turn it sideways. And then you're gonna, what Neil A. Patel likes to call, break the neck. So you're gonna come in with some thinner, sharper pliers, however you can get in there. And you're just gonna kink it like that. So there is this piece, okay? So now we just need to make the loop and we wanna make a, now this is where I, I wrap three times, that's why I got confused. So I'm going to make a wrap loop and I'm just going to the back I'm gonna take my round nose and I'm gonna make a loop. Okay. And I'm gonna, again, you don't wanna grab where they're crossing. You wanna grab right there. Okay, we're gonna wrap three times. Two, three. You wanna be in the front now. So this one's in the back, this one's in the front. And now we're gonna make our little spiral. So I think actually this is, might be too long. We'll see. So I'm not the world's expert at spirals, but what you wanna do is start with your, the very tip of your round nose and make and this takes practice. This is a good thing to practice if you have 
scraps left over. And then we're just gonna make our loop. Oh yeah, that works. And then see how it's sticking out? You just wanna press it with your thumb. You can keep your index finger here and just press, press it down. And then if you need to adjust some things, you can just make little small movements and adjust them. And that's how you make that shape. So let me move these out of the way, my tools. Um, just keep in mind, if you want a bigger spiral, you got to use more inches. Always make your divot at the four inch mark. Uh, but if you want the spiral to be bigger, um, and then if you don't want any spiral, you could do eight inches and just wrap it. Oh, I did want to just straighten that up a little. And you can just straighten up, you know, however you want. If you like it the way it is, you don't have to do anything to it. They're not going to be exact, like I said, but they are going to be this, you know, similar. So, and then you can decide how you want to, see this one was a little bit smaller, but that's okay. So, no embellishment, small embellishment, large embellishment, just like that. So these are going to hang from the necklace. So now... I want to put some of these melon beads just on the outside. I want to use a color, different color for each one. So I'm going to do one on camera, uh, but I'm not going to make you watch all of them because that will make the video very long. So what I'll do is I'll do this one for the center and then uh, I'll do the rest off camera so we can make the rest of the necklace. But I, I wrapped some 26 gauge wire six times around this and here's my little end piece that I'll cut later so and then this is about uh, about 12 inches or so of the 26 gauge so now we're gonna the fun part is figuring out what color we want to use yay you guys it is so stinking hot here I am saying words that are not very ladylike and all next week it's supposed to be 105 every day. If you're having the same issue, just stay hydrated. That's all I can say. Any of you that are not dealing with this, you're lucky. Uh, some prayers for some rain would be nice. And by the way, uh, thank you so much for the very kind prayers for my friend that was in the hospital. She is out of the hospital. She's doing much, much better. Um, yeah, that salmonella is no joke. So... Uh, I'm really glad that she's out and I appreciate um, all y'all's support on that and your your comments and in wishing her well. She's doing much, much better. Okay, so I have to decide what colors. So this will be fun. So let's see. So the center one, I don't know. There's a way, there's a way. Maybe we should do it in rainbow order even though I don't have all the rainbow. And what I mean by that is, let's see. Yeah, I, I like the idea of rainbow order. When you're stumped, that always looks nice. But obviously we have nine and we only have five. So let's see, let's do red. It's more of a berry color, but that's okay. And then let's do orange. We can always change our mind. Just want to see visually what that's going to look like. Red, orange, yellow would be the centerpiece. G. And blue. So 
So Roy G. Biv is the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So we're doing red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. We don't need to worry about the indigo and the violet. That would be the violet. Now we can change this up if we want, um, but I think, I think I like that. So we'll move these over. There's something visually satisfying about seeing the rainbow like that for people. And that's, that was a hint and a, uh, somebody was telling me if you ever set up for like a show, if you're showing your jewelry, if you set up your table in the rainbow order, like everything you made in red first and then orange and then yellow, it visually looks very cohesive. I've never forgotten that. I have not ever sold anything at a, a fair or a show, but for those of you that do that, that's a thought. Okay, so we have our idea and I will do these off camera and come back, but let's do the yellow on camera. So again, I have my 26 gauge wire and I'm just gonna wrap maybe twice between each one. And so we're just gonna zip line that. And I don't want to kink this up, so I'm gonna be very gentle with it. I'm just gonna push it through and then make my one loop. Knocking everything over. <laughs> Two loops. It almost sounds like Fruit Loops. <laughs> Two loops. And there's our bead. Let's grab another one. I love these little fluted beads. They're cute. All right. Again, we're gonna just hold that with my finger and my thumb. I'm gonna one loop. And just push it through two loops. Gotta push it back through so we can get our next bead on there. So that's more like two and a half loops, but I think you get the gist. I'm gonna have beads flying all over, I'm just gonna warn you. <laughs> it happens when you got lots of wire and you know me, I love to drop beads, so what's wrong with flinging a few around too? A little bead flinging never hurt anybody. All right, maybe give yourself some room. Oh, and you can also, um, with your fingernail or a tool, push those together if you want them tighter. All right, let's continue. I'm gonna gently pull that through. That was one, two, back around. And we'll grab our next bead, push those together. So this is what we have so far. You could just do one wrap if you want them closer together. That's up to you. That's designer's choice. You could do smaller beads. Don't have to use the, you know, you could use some of these tiny beads might make you blind, but you could try it. <laughs> I don't think there's enough of them though, unless you just do one or two of these. This make some cute earrings too. You could make two and do earrings. All right. Again, we're gonna go once. Push that through. Oh, that's pretty wide. Let me push that. I'm 
And that's okay if you have to go back and... All right, that was two. And I gotta go back in through here so I can grab my last bead. Let me just push that. Let me grab this guy. These are so helpful when you're doing wire work. Yeah. All right. Last bead. Okay. Of course, the narrower this gets, a little more challenging it's going to be, but you have plenty of space to slide this through, which is nice. And again, you want, I mean, I obviously have too much wire, but I don't want to um, run out of wire. So I'd rather have too much. So this is two wraps. I'm gonna do, so like I did at the top here, I'm gonna do six. So we're just gonna keep going. That's three. Four. Five. Just trying to cross over. There we go. All right. This is six. Okay. And I want to trim it inside here. Um, I'm just sliding this down so I can trim it. So this is where I started up here. I'm just going to push that with my thumbnail. And I'm going to nip it right inside the shape. And then I'll come in and just get rid of that little piece up there. I like these because they have the little notches in them. These are on, these are crimpers, but when you're dealing with fine wire, it's nice to have the pointy end and also the little divots in there kind of help. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna slide this up a little and we're gonna do the same thing on the inside here. Actually, let me, I'm gonna slide that through so I have the wire on the inside. That way nothing's poking anyone. Spin it around if you have to. I think there's still... That's better. Okay, so there is our center, and see how these are closer together and those are part? You can squish them now that you've got it. You know, you can, my idea was to have them be mostly up at the top here. It'd be cool to do in different spots too, but there's our center. 
And then we're going to do a dangle too. Um, let's see. The dangles, I thought we would use these blue ones and just do one, uh, one little dangle. So let's do that real quick. Then I'll go off camera and f do the rest of these and then we'll put the necklace, the necklace together. Yay. All right. So I'm gonna use some gold head pins. Now these are shorter because I'm just gonna make a simple loop. Get a good grip on it, let me, I'm gonna warm this because I don't need to bend it. These are pretty tough head pins. Maybe I can use this. Those of you that don't have strong hands, let your tools help you. I just want to bend this at a 90 degree angle. There we go. Just like that. Have you heard my mom sneezing? <laughs> it that's weird because nothing. I'm our ground is cracking. That's how dry it is. But yet everybody's still suffering from allergies. I can't figure that one out. All right. I'm okay with it being a little open because we gotta attach it anyway. Maybe it would be best to do it with this. This is bigger. Let me open that up and slide this on. Yeah, that's better. Use the big loop and make a little loop for your dangle. Now I've also thought about putting a dangle just in the center one. I'm gonna wait until I have them all lined up before I make that decision. But this is what we're going for. So let me finish these off camera. Um, and then we'll put the necklace together. Sound like a plan? Yay! Stay tuned. Okay, I'm back. And I went ahead and made all our components with the really pretty melon beads in the different colors. And I also added the really pretty drops. And I'm still debating whether I'm gonna hang something from here or not, but I did lay out a design I like for stringing. So I thought we would get these strung and then um, I took apart the Jesse James bead strand as well, in case I wanna use any of that in the necklace. I haven't really decided yet, but I love, like I said, I love these. I might save them for a different project though. Got plenty to work with here. And then of course, I'm gonna use the crimp beads and our copper, beautiful Metallics Softflex copper wire. So let me just push these out of the way. Oh, we also have these Hishi beads. Maybe I'll use a couple of Hishi beads in here. All right. Metallics, medium, soft flex. Alrighty. Just occurred to me, I don't really have a, I'll have to get some, uh, what I'm gonna close this necklace with, but I'm not gonna make a very big necklace, I think. I'm going, I mean, a long necklace. Cause I kinda want this to lay like right on your breastbone. 
So let me see here. Let me do a little measuring. So this is 12 inches. And maybe I'll do 22 inches. That ought to do it. And then I'll give myself a little extra for loops and things for the findings. So let me just. Let me just measure that again real fast. So we got 12. And 12. Ah. So 25 inches. That'll be fine. So let's get going on. I can't wait. I'm so anxious. I really love this. I'm really liking how this is turning out. So I think I'm going to put our middle piece on first. And we'll just start stringing. I love these. I'm going to put these little tiny daisy spacers in between the arabesque beads. They're also in the copper. Fun, fun, fun. These are T9C guys. All right. <laughs> okay, I think I'll do one side and then the other. This wire is so nice to get through beads. I know I've said it before, but I really just love how it glides right through there. And I love these fire polish beads too. And I'm not gonna bead all the way up the sides, but I'm gonna do a little beading up the sides, I think. <laughs> My fingers don't wanna work. What else is new? <laughs> it's kind of difficult to make jewelry if your fingers don't work. <laughs> I like how these little leaf shaped things turned out and I like the different colors. I think it adds a lot of interest. All right, and then I was gonna do three purple fire polished on this side, if I can find the, there we go. All right. And then maybe we'll do a hishi, a bead cap, One of those melon beads. Bead cap. And a hishi for now. Let's do this side. So we're going to do just the same thing. In fact, before I do that, so this doesn't go flying, I'm going to use one of these little bead things. Oops, I don't know if you use these. I really like them. They keep your beads from sliding while you're working on a project. There's a trade name called Bead Buddies, uh, but they are a little different than those. I'm not sure where I got these. One of the local bead shops, I think, around here. They had a bag of them for a good price. And they are worth the investment. They're like an extra pair of hands. I'm 
Okay. Oops. Need another purple. I always lose my place. I don't know why I do that, but I do. <laughs> I caught it though. I think there was a bargain bead box. I did a necklace and I missed, I missed a spot. But you guys have eagle eyes. You always, oh, uh, you missed, you missed that. <laughs> I think I, re I realized it after I finished it on, on the uh, video, but hey, it happens to the best of us. I am by no means, no means perfect. I think I decided to leave that flaw. Oh, we better have another daisy. I could have sworn I pulled another one out. Row, row. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Should be eight. Hmm. Okay, so not sure what happened to the other little daisy spacer. So we're going to have to. I don't think I have any that tiny. Hmm. All right. So we're gonna use the daisies in the middle. Those two. These we will, I'll put something else. Let's use these little fluted guys. Hey, you gotta switch it up sometimes. No worries. Except for I'm gonna have to restring that one side. That's okay, it won't take long. Let's just finish this side. I do love to string. To me, it's a very, this is just relaxing. Kind of get into a rhythm and I don't know, just fun. It's just fun. I guess that's why we all do it, huh? I just think it's a great, you know, you can't get bored. There's so many different ways and colors and shapes and things that you can do with beads. It's just amazing. Okay, so let me put another one of these guys on this side and we will switch gears here since we ran out of I could have sworn there were eight of those daisy beads, but that's okay. Just gives us an excuse to switch it up some more. Okay. Let me grab these. I'm glad I took that strand apart because these are nice. This will just add another cool little element. Back in business. Now we 
do our, let's see, he, she. Uh, you guys. <laughs> Your girl's tired. <laughs> Let's add our leaf, shall we? God almighty. I can hear all of you screaming. You forgot the leaf. <laughs> oh, man. It takes a village. <laughs> I heard you. I know you're all over the place, but I heard every last one of you. You forgot the leaf. Okay. Thank you for that. Thank you for that reminder. <laughs> you telepathically, you put that out in the universe. I, I grabbed it. I got it. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez Louise. All right. Let's see if I can get this necklace put together without any more mishaps. Marcy, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, I'm glad I didn't make this so complicated, but it is a long, little lengthy of a project, but I figure you guys can handle it. But I really do love that. Well, I love how that looks. Isn't that pretty? So I think I want to do just a little bit more beading up the sides. Uh, let's see how many of these purple... I want to do some more of those, some more purple. Uh, maybe some of these copper. And then, oh, I didn't use any yellow. No, I use that on the next one couple of these guys maybe and then we'll end it with these that'll work all right so let me do a purple copper melon Rondell and one of these guys with the point down. Just to pick up what I got going on in the drops. We'll do the other side. Then I gotta find some kind of finding for this. Um, so I will probably, I'm trying to think, I do have some copper ones I could look at. Ooh, I'm loving this. Okay. All right, so let's finish it off with a toggle or something. Let me just move these over. Of course, we're gonna let all this gorgeous wire show because it coordinates so nicely. Let me just take a quick look and make sure I didn't miss anything else. Yeah, so while you're wearing it, it's gonna be like that. And I'm still deciding on that. Let me look at my Copper findings for a minute. I have a bunch. Some antique copper. Hmm. Let me look at another one. Oh. More toggles. Oh, 
Oh, I like the hook. What goes with the hook? Should be just something with a loop, shouldn't it? I don't think it goes with this. Although I could use it with that. Lots of findings. All right, I think I'm gonna do the loop with this. Let's make sure. Well, let me look at this a minute. Got a lot of the same. Okay, we're just, we're gonna do this. Let me just make sure that this, that'll work. All right, sold. So we're just gonna basically use a crimp bead. Uh, we're gonna fling that across the room just for good luck. You know how you throw salt over your shoulder? Throw that crimp bead over your shoulder. <laughs> I think I'm punchy. All right, and then we're gonna uh, just crimp this. I gotta find my, I think I dropped my crimper. There we go. Okay, and we don't wanna cross those. And, oh, no, I didn't drop it. Yay, I didn't drop it. <laughs> Oh boy. I think the heat makes me a little loopy. All right. And I'll probably put crimp covers. And if you have their magical crimping tool, use that. I'm gonna, I'll trim that later. Do this side. The copper crimps are really pretty. not want to go in there. I don't know why. There we go. There we go. I do think I want to put a little dangle on that center piece. Nothing elaborate, just something. Just a little something something. So let's see. Ooh, that's pretty. I like it. So let's see here. Copper bead. Maybe it should go. Yeah. We will do this. And that. Let me grab my. I'm gonna get some longer head pins for that. Maybe I do a ball head pin if I have one that's long enough. Nope. All right. Oh, you know what? 
let's put one of our little daisies at the bottom. Okay. That's cute. Little bead cap. Purple bead. And we'll hang it. Right like that. In hindsight, I probably should have put that on before I strung it, but I don't think it'll be that hard to add it. You could do drops on all of them, but I think I just want to, I just want this center one to have a little more difference, if that makes sense. And I think we can make a little spiral here too. Just, just cause. Just a teeny one, totally optional. But why not? Okay. I'm going to get some of these beads out of the way. We'll take a final look. Okay, so I got everything cleaned up a little and laid out and I think it turned out really really nice um it, this is a lengthy um little project but I think I mean the steps are pretty simple it's just that you have to make multiples of course and do some multiple wiring but um I'm pretty happy with this I really love this could these colors and um just the different shapes I love to mix the metals. I love that there's gold, there's some cop, antique copper, and um, like an antique gold, more copper. The copper wire looks very nice. Love all the different colors of the melon beads. I like, I'm glad that I changed it up. Uh, and I think it turned out rather nice. So let me just give you a little close up of some areas. So you can see. We pop that back down. Yeah, so that is my Moroccan Bazaar necklace. I really, really had fun with it. It's a gorgeous uh, kit. If they have any left, they may have some left on uh, the Softflex site. Uh, if you don't have it, check it out. See if you can get your hands on one. Um, I highly recommend it. I think it's a really beautiful kit. Um, it's almost like muted colors, almost like we're leaning. I'm, at least maybe I'm hopeful that we're leaning towards fall and we can get this stupid hot weather out of the way. <laughs> but because, because this, this is very muted jewel tones that would look great with like a fall sweater. Not that you can't wear it in the summer. Denim would be really pretty with this too or like a rust colored silk shirt would be beautiful or like a rust color uh, or copper colored off the shoulder top might be nice so 
just think of all those colors and what would look nice wearing this. I always try to imagine this when I make jewelry, what it looks like with certain outfits that I have. I don't know if you do that or not, but I do that. So anyway, uh, thanks for joining me tonight. I know this was a lengthy one. If you stayed to the end, thank you, thank you. Um, please hit the like and subscribe. It's so weird because I, I see people have subscribed and then the next day two people are off of there and I think, I don't know what YouTube does. I've had to resubscribe many times to channels that I like. So just check, make sure you're still subscribed. If you're not, click on the subscribe. I really would appreciate it. It helps my channel a lot um, and it helps me a lot too. And I just want to thank you all again for all the lovely comments and, and the prayers for my friend. And uh, I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate you. So with that, I'm going to say good evening or good morning, whenever it is you're watching this. And uh, take care of your sweet selves and your families. Be safe. Be safe in the heat or whatever extreme temperatures you're dealing with, for sure. And uh, I will see you on the next video.